the purpose of this video is to explain uh, two basic operations that we perform on signals. One is scaling and the other is adding two signals together. So as you will no doubt recall, a signal from the, per or from the perspective of signals and systems is just a function and typically we describe it as a function of time. So we'll draw our axes here. Try to get that's time and we'll have a signal which is a function of time. Okay, And I'll just uh, start with sort of a random or arbitrarily drawn signal. Let's start with something that looks more or less like a sine wave. Well, that's actually not bad. And we'll assume that it goes up to an amplitude of 1 and down to an amplitude of minus 1. Okay, so this is a signal. Uh, if we wanted to write this mathematically, this one might be x of t is sine of t, which means that this point here is pi and this point here is 2 pi. Okay, so we have a signal. And uh, quite often, in fact, uh, more often than you probably will want by the time we're done, we're going to do something like this. We're going to take the signal x of t and we're going to say another signal y of t is some constant, say 2 in this case, times x of t. So in this case, we are scaling x of t by a factor of 2. So this would be the scale factor Okay, now um, the way we actually do this scaling then, conceptually at least, is that for every point on our original signal, so uh, I'll just pick a random point here, say one at zero, we'll take another one here, another one here. At each of these points, and in fact at every point on the signal, we take that point and we multiply it by two. So if you take this one and multiply it by 2, you still get 0. If I take uh, this point and multiply it by 2, I get, say, something up here. If I take this point and multiply it by 2, I get something up here. And so the idea is that at every point in time, I take the value of the signal and I multiply it by 2. So this point gets moved up here. This point stays at 0. This point is uh, twice the negative value. And so on. And you can see that uh, by looking at each of these individual points, we're essentially creating a signal that looks like the original signal, but it's just been scaled by a factor of 2. So now this value out here is 2, this value out here is uh, minus 2. I guess I should extend my axes. This is getting kind of messy. But anyway, hopefully you get the point. Now let's suppose that instead of a scale factor of 2, we did something like this. y of t is equal to 1 half x of t. So this is a scale factor of 1 half. Well, I do exactly the same thing. Uh, this point is going to stay 0. I multiply the value at this point by 1 half, the value at this point by 1 half, and so on. And so I'll actually get something when I'm done that looks like this. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much scaling. The idea is that at every point in time we multiply the value of the signal at that point in time by the scale factor. You'll notice that a scale factor that's less than 1 shrinks my waveform, that is it um, takes the original that goes up to 1 and it smashes things down. A scale factor that's greater than 1 takes 
the signal and expands it on the vertical axis. Okay, so that's scaling. Okay, we'll get rid of this mess. And now we'll look at addition. So in order to do addition, I need to have two waveforms. So I'm going to create, uh, well, create our axis again, and we'll call this T. And let's suppose our first waveform is, uh, we'll do a sine wave again. Sine wave was kind of fun. Looks something like this. So this guy is going to be x1 of t. I'll call this. Okay. Now we're going to have a second waveform. And uh, I think what I'll do for the second waveform is a waveform that's 0 out until we get to about here. And then it jumps up to 1 and stays at, well, it jumps up not necessarily to 1, but it jumps up to some value and stays there for a while. This is a step function, and you'll see plenty of these in the days and weeks to come. So basically, this is going to be x2 of t. Okay, and now uh, what I want to figure out how to do is suppose I need to take a signal, call it y, and that's the sum of x1 of t plus x2 of t. Okay, so I need, what I want to do here is add two signals. Uh, you may ask yourself, why on earth do I ever add two signals? Well, it shows up all the time in control systems. Uh, it shows up all the time in uh, Fourier transform analysis. Uh, it's just a very useful thing to be able to understand how to do, and particularly to understand conceptually. So suppose I look at this point in time, and I want to add x1 plus x2. Well, the value of x1 at this point of time is right here. The value of x2 at this point in time is 0, and so the sum of them is going to be just this value here. Let's look over here at this point in time. The value of x1 at this point in time is, uh, this looks like it's close to negative 1 maybe, and the value of x2 at this point in time is uh, whatever that value is. So the sum of the two is going to be, say, right about here. I have a negative value, I add a positive value, I get something like this. And if we look at another point in time, we have this value for x1, this value for x2. Uh, again, if we add them, we get something that looks like this. If we go over here, at this point in time, we've got this value for x1, this value for x2, and so this value up here becomes the value of the sum. And so continuing in this way, basically adding, at every point in time, adding the two signals, I get a resulting signal that passes through these sums. It looks like that. And uh, over in this region, uh, x2 is 0, so when I add 0 to x1, I just get the original signal. So the sum of the two signals, if you can see this lovely sort of brownish looking thing, looks like this. And again, the idea here is that I've added the two signals together by, for every value of time, I found out what x1 is at that point in time, I found out what x2 is at that point in time, and then I've just added those two values together to give me the sum at that point in time. So hopefully uh, this has made the uh, concept of scaling and addition of signals crystal clear. Again, this is something that's going to be used extensively. Uh, the first place that it'll probably be used uh, is in determining whether systems are linear. Uh, but again, it's used all over the place in Fourier analysis. It's used in Laplace transforms. It's just used everywhere.